What's going on you guys? Welcome back to the channel. This camera is so high tech that it makes me look prettier. But that's beside the fact guys. So if you guys haven't already noticed the quality of this camera and I'm really trying hard to not stare at the screen up here but it is different. It is uh bigger than the GoPro but it's something I'm gonna have to get used to right now I just have the lens kind of you know folded up to see myself to see my frame see how far my arm got to be to uh, really get myself or whatever it is that I'm doing in frame for you guys so it's not like all up in my face like so I bought the Canon G7X and if you guys saw the last video I did go to Best Buy and took a sneak peek of it to see if they had it in stock and my nephew was like just buy it already so I did and uh, there's a lot of settings that I have not learned yet I literally took it out the box today and uh, pretty much just snapped some photos changed settings here and there to uh, be familiar with it I haven't had a camera like this where it had all the adjustments on it the GoPro is more of a turn on and shoot type of deal but we have a new camera guys in the last video I didn't really talk much because the audio was very very stuffy so last week I went to the junkyard and I mentioned that I dropped Pretty much my whole rig in the mud and water while I was out there in the rain pretty much destroyed the adapter and um, it will work sometime and sometimes it'll just have no audio at all my road mic was also dipped in the water mud and um, you know I, I don't want to have to keep like struggling with my microphone setup and stuff with the GoPro so I went ahead and just bought the uh, G7X that I've been wanting for a year now the GoPro still works, but the audio is kind of muffled, so I'm just going to keep that for a more of in-car type of deal and like for jobs that uh, requires me to, you know, go underneath the car or do a lot of maneuvering, stuff like that, and, um, you know, show you what it is that I'm doing rather than take the G7X and mess that up because you guys know me. I use my camera a lot. And because this is a new camera, I don't think it's ready for me to do a ton of work with it. So the GoPro is going to be in handy for a certain type of things that I do with the videos, but uh, mostly gonna be vlogging with the g7x now but with that being said guys I know I've been pushing the all-wheel drive CRX build uh, onto the side because I've been prepping the h22 CRX for track which was two weeks ago and then it got postponed to this past Sunday and then this past Sunday came up and then it was postponed again so now track is this Sunday the 27th and I'm really set on going the two weeks of postpone really gave me uh, extra time to really tinker with the car and get it ready for track. And there's really not much more to do to the car other than remove some of the items that I'm going to be keeping from the car. And uh, that also includes the lower control arm, which I'm going to be swapping out with these guys right here. And I'm going to be keeping the Skunk 2s that are currently on the car. Once I get the H22 CRX moved off the driveway, I'm going to be bringing the red CRX up here. And I got a fuel gauge from glow shift that i bought on ebay not too long ago and uh, i'm gonna be installing that today and one thing i do now enjoy having is uh zoom ability check it out so as i mentioned today is going to be a very simple day Nothing crazy going on, especially because I started super late. Had the nephews over, they were on the trampoline. And uh, I had a comment that said, at this point, you might as well run no hood. Well, technically, this hood was already jacked up. If you guys haven't seen the video a long time ago, I tried to save this and I prefer to have a hood. So I've always wanted to do something like this and uh, this turned out freaking awesome. There's nothing really to do under the hood here other than taking my plug right here which is for my uh, max solenoid boost controller and I'm gonna be taking the bracket right there because that's also for my boost controller and yeah that's pretty much it under the hood now underneath the car I did mention I am gonna take my lower control arms which is right here skunk 2 I'm also going to drop the preload a little bit on the rear shocks because the car is ultra stiff and uh, I don't know the car will bounce everywhere when I take off and uh, I just think it's too stiff so I'm gonna loosen up the preload a little bit by um, turning the perch a few times to kind of get the tension off the spring itself and hopefully it'll be a little softer so it can squat a little bit more rather than bouncing all over the damn track so that's what I'm gonna do right now and then I'm gonna move the red CRX up
these are brand new skunk 2 control arms and uh probably only has like a thousand miles on it as well as the uh, 50 tie bar gonna be keeping that i'm not sure if this fits the crx it originally came out for that car because now the diff is in the way so it might hit here i'm not sure what i'm gonna do with this just yet but here is the ebay control arms installed looks good i think the chrome goes with the uh the gray if you guys remember my wagon over there had a uh, full chrome polish engine bay on the gray and uh it worked out great but now i'm gonna loosen up the preload a little bit on the springs and it's pretty simple so when i preloaded these springs you can see how it's compressed right now when the wheel is not even on and the car is not on the floor what i did was i loosened up this coil right about down here or so and then i put the top hat on right here and threaded it to the shaft maybe like one or two spins and then i uh pretty much preloaded this to compress the spring a little bit to make it where it's not you know uh loose right here and then i uh zap down the top hat the 14 millimeter and uh as soon as you zap it down the hat compresses the spring as it is threading up into the nut and uh that pretty much causes my preload and obviously this right here is stupid stiff. Okay, so what I did was I uh, loosened up the uh, 14 millimeter on the top right there, right? Not all the way, but I loosened it up to about there compared to this side. And that allowed me to spin the upper collar much easier than it is fully compressed. And you can see how much of the sleeve you can uh, see right there, right? So I'm gonna take it to the other side. And you can barely see it on this side. So I'm gonna take my measuring tape, I'm gonna match the other side to this side, spin that collar, and then re-preload it on the top hat inside the trunk. make every test hit that I can get <laughs> somehow I'm gonna rig this camera on my row cage zoomed in on the boost gauge and uh, see where we're kicking Well, I felt like that car was boosting definitely more than 15 pounds, but uh, I'm not sure until I see the video. But here is the package that I got the other day. I'm going to go ahead and uh, attempt to cut this with one hand and a very, very dull scissor. Okay, let me do this real quick. Okay, so in here we have a glow shift fuel gauge. 
Now I need a fuel gauge just because the ohm readings on the sending unit on the tank is different than the OEM uh, cluster. So this one right here uh, is a seven tinted colored or tinted seven color series, which um, you know I can set the color of my choice. So this gauge is universal. It has a knob on the back side that allows you to, to set which ohm your sending unit is. And because my tank is zero to 90 ohms, there's a uh, knob in the back that tells you which number to turn a dial to, to set for the correct ohms of your sending unit. Now you can't really see it. It's literally in that hole right. Okay, okay. I'm gonna have to get used to the zoom thing because I've never had zoom featured before. But, anyways, it's it's definitely in this hole right here. I can see the numbers. But yeah, this allows you to set to which ohm your sending unit is and calibrate pretty much, um, you know, to your gas in your tank. Comes with your wiring harness, right? Comes with the hardware to bolt the gauge wherever it is that you please and obviously the manual. There are only five wire on the harness and uh, it's pretty simple. I read online that somebody was saying the yellow was ground, but I won't know until I install this, so. I'm gonna clean my interior real quick because my seats aren't bolted in. There's still a bunch of crap right here in the back. I'm gonna clean all that out to figure out where I want my gauge, which I already know where I want my gauge, but <laughs> you guys don't know. My carpet isn't the cleanest, but uh, I got most of it vacuumed out. This one right here is super darker because it is wet and that probably came from the sunroof itself. I'm going to have to address this uh, some other time, but I'm not going to put the floor mat back on. Let that dry out a little bit. Let it air out. And uh, I'm going to install the seats and everything else that belongs underneath the dashboard, glove box, all of that stuff. And we'll get to the gauge. Probably going to go right there. So update, I uh, got my interior put back together. Can't really tell, but the only thing is missing is the center console because I still have to put the gauge in. But I'm gonna show you guys really quickly what the instructions said to do. And um, you know, red wire right here is constant 12 volt. Yellow is a switch 12 volt. So this one right here pretty much goes either to the fuse box or somewhere on the ignition system where when you turn the key on, this guy would come on right away. The constant red is memory, which is, you know, when you set your color on your gauge and you turn the car off and you turn it back on, it remembers which color you left it on instead of having to reset it every single time. The black from the harness goes to ground and then the orange is a 30% dimmer and this is what goes to your headlights so when you're driving at night it's not ultra bright what it does is it dims the gauge so I'm gonna put it to the battery and you can watch it dim see how it dims down now in my case I don't care about the dimming portion of this so I'm probably not gonna install this to your headlight the last color is green and this is what goes to your fuel sending unit and on the fuel sending unit harness there's a green and yellow and what i'm going to assume because this damn fuel cell didn't come with any type of instruction nor did it come with a uh you know fema end connector green is connected to the green on the sending unit and then the other one is ground the uh, instruction for the gauge says the sending unit has a ground wires again i'm going to assume the opposite of the green which is the yellow and that right now is currently grounded over there to the battery post so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to take the green from the harness and i'm going to connect it to the green that's on the sending unit harness right here and uh, watch the gauge change So obviously that's way lesser than a quarter tank and uh, what kind of boggles my mind right now is the dial on the back of the gauge is set to number four and number four is for zero to 90 ohms which is what's rated for that sensor right there according to the uh, description for this product. And uh, I don't know if you can see it down there but the um 
the floater is not even touching anything it's literally right there and when I put the ohm meter right here onto the gauge it reads eight instead of zero or uh, wherever it's at and I think where it's reading eight is what's giving me that uh, lesser than quarter tank on the gauge uh, I'm a little confused but when I pick that floater all the way to the top it's about 97 and uh, I'm not sure if the sending unit is faulty or if it's inaccurate or whatever but my fuel is quarter tank when I measured it it's about right here and that's about quarter this right here is half that's 75 percent three quarter and then full up top for a 15 gallon fuel cell um so i'm not 100 percent sure what's going on with that all right guys so what i've done was this wire right here is um it's sleeved and there's two 18 gauge wire there's a black and there's a red right here where it comes out and one of it is the green wire for the sending unit and the other one is ground i could have grounded in the back but because there was already two wires in here i'm just going to ground it up in the front with the uh harness ground wire right here i'm going to put a ring terminal on it wherever you're at right here i'm gonna put a ring terminal i'm gonna put it right there where all the other grounds are at and uh that's a solid ground so the red wire right here is going to the fuse box I don't know if you can see it um, it's going to this slot right there right that's a constant 12 volt with key off every Honda I know has this slot you just got to probe it and find out which one is giving the uh, constant 12 volt and then uh, with the key in the on position out of all the slots that I have this one right here is the one that gives 12 volts when the key is in the on position so because there's a wire already in there with like my other switches that I have for fan and stuff um, I had a branch off of it using this connector and that'll be my yellow uh, 12 volt switch and that right there pretty much turns the gauge on when the key is in the on position the red allows me to keep the cut the red wire allows me to keep the uh, the red wire is memory, so whatever color I set the gauge to, when I turn the car back on again, it's going to stay at the same color. Um, because this one right here is allowing the gauge to remember, you know, what color it was set to before turning the car off. And then the orange wire, again, I'm not going to be using this because I don't need a 30% dimmer. And uh, again, this one right here pretty much goes to your headlight switch. So you're going to have to find out which color is your headlight in the on which then would give power to that wire, telling the gauge to dim 30%, if that makes sense. I'm gonna show you guys how mine works right now before I button everything up. I'm sorry for doing this in the dark and my light's kinda dying, but uh, figuring out this whole wiring situation took a little bit of time because, you know, obviously I was confused earlier, but I'm gonna show you guys right here. Key on one, right, gauge comes on. So I'm gonna set it to blue this one right here right and I'm gonna turn the key off gauge goes off okay keys out I'm gonna put it back in what the red wire does is remembers what color I left it at on position back to blue so yeah that's that's pretty much how I'm gonna do it and uh, what I'm gonna do as of right now is I'm gonna set this sucker in my uh, slot right there and I'm gonna have more slots in this when I get more gauges but right now I have two slots probably one for the fuel one for AFR I'm gonna have one for boost and maybe oil pressure or something if I get gauges before the uh, challenge but this right here fits so snug that I don't have to use the bracket in the back so I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, loop the harness through run my ground finish um, clean everything up right here and then I'm gonna slip the gauge into place and show you my final product with the center console kind of in place because we still got to put more gauges later all right guys so I got my interior somewhat buttoned up console and everything's put back in shift boot temp gauge and uh, fuel gauge so I'm gonna turn it on oh yeah 
Now imagine if I had a bunch more of these uh, same color gauges here. I think it'll light up the interior really nicely. But fuel gauge is done, guys. Um, I won't know if this is like correct or not until I fill up my tank. And uh, I'll do so when the car is ready to be back on the street. Interior is looking spiffy again. Got everything all cleaned up. Everything taken out that's unnecessary. Fuel cell, uh, battery. That's my floor mat for the passenger side because it's still wet. But that's pretty much going to be it for this video, guys. Didn't realize how long this was going to take. Uh, again, this is my first time doing a fuel gauge with an aftermarket fuel sending unit, fuel cell. And uh, I think I got it pretty much, you know, installed according to the instructions. Except I didn't run the orange for the 30% dimmer. But nonetheless, it's bright enough for me to see. And it's in a good spot for me to visually check on it while I drive. So that's good. We are done here for tonight, guys. Friday's video may be a little bit different. But uh, I still got a plan for that tomorrow. Also, quick reminder, if you guys want to enter the 4BP Static Giveaway 4, be sure to go back to Monday's video and comment in that video only. Hashtag 4BP Static Giveaway 4. And that will simply give you a chance to win a 4 bangers key tag. So good luck to you guys. And also guys, be sure to check out the builttodrive.bigcartel.com. We have two t-shirts available, stickers. We have some new merches coming in really soon. And when we do get them, I will announce them for you guys to check it out. So if you guys are interested in supporting the channel in any way, pick yourself up a sticker. Anything helps. And all proceeds is going to go towards new merchandises and more projects. With that being said, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's content. It's a little short. It's a little confusing. But progress is better than no progress. We are getting close with getting this car back on the streets and one step closer to doing all-wheel drive launches so be sure to like comment and subscribe thank you guys for watching and i'll see you guys in the next video peace